colleague Mina and I are going to be covering the history, literacy, being informed for your health, what the FDA is doing along on their labels, binge eating disorders, and the decrease in smoking, leading to an increase in death rates for lung cancer patients. Overall, hundreds of thousands of diseases, disorders, cancers, and other medical issues go unrecognized and uncared for. Over the course of this year, Romy and I have been studying and understanding at the beginning of the year, Romy and I never realized how truly important the labels on FDA approved medicines are, as well as literacy having a major impact on your wealth when you get home. Also, Mide and I did not understand that the decrease in smoking could lead to an increased death rate for patients with lung cancer, as well as the amount of people affected by obesity in our country. One of the major events that has happened this past year is that obesity rate has risen about 4% in people at the age of 65 and older. Before we begin exploring these topics, I would just like to explain that there are biases towards the topics. For example, some may argue that the decline in smoking rates does actually benefit your health in the long run. Also, many people feel that binge eating is associated with obesity. However, 55% of people who binge eat are actually of a normal weight. Expanding more on the idea of what the FDA is doing wrong with their labels, many people would agree that the FDA has been lacking in the effectiveness and quality of producing their labels for their approved products, which could lead to many different major health risks. Over time, our understanding of these different issues have evolved into a vast understanding because of their major effects and because of the major facts and insight we acquired through our research. Obesity is a complex disorder involving an excessive amount of body fat. It increases your risk of diseases and health problems such as heart disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Dietary changes, increased physical activity, and body changes has helped lose weight. During the past two decades, the prevalence of obesity in children has risen greatly worldwide. Obesity in children causes a wide range of serious complications and increases the risk of premature illness and death later in life raising public health concerns. Results of research have provided new insights into the psychological basis of body weight regulation. However, treatment for childhood obesity remains largely ineffective. In view of its rapid development in genetically stable populations, the childhood obesity epidemic can be primarily attributed to adverse environmental factors for which solutions exist. Call. As many of us are about to make resolutions to be healthy next year, we're looking at the dangerous change in children's health. Child obesity, in particular, is on the rise at a staggering rate. 21% of 12 to 9 year olds are obese, while 18% of 6 to 11 year olds are obese. And those rates have more than quadrupled in the last 30 years for teens and more than doubled for young children. In Douglas County, the statistics are just as alarming. More than 30,000 children ages 5 to 17 are overweight in Douglas County. That could fill the CenturyLink Center and the Civic Auditorium. One in three children ages 2 to 5 are overweight or obese. Preschoolers who are obese are five times more likely to be obese as adults. They're also more likely to have heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, strokes, plus joint problems, sleep apnea, and poor self-esteem. Just in Douglas County, obesity-related medical costs are $273 million a year. Raising a child who's obese costs about an extra $50,000, but that's the cost isn't the concern, it's their condition. Joining us now to talk about childhood obesity is Dr. Susan Kiesling Evans, family doctor with CHI Health. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you and for having me. And talking about childhood obesity and the rates, it's, it's alarming. It really is. Um, just the, like you mentioned, the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. there's very high numbers of children with obesity and also the fact then that it leads to very serious health conditions also. It's um, not just the weight that they've put on, it's also the risks as they are getting older and the risks while they're children. And, and at such a young age, we're seeing them, you know, before preschool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
and you know just looking at what are the types of foods that mm -hmm. that uh, children are eating these days and you know looking at um, overall lifestyle mm -hmm. factors you know and there was a time when we really didn't have to think about that at that age you know we didn't used to see type 2 diabetes in children at all and now that's a real concern also and that's changed over the years mm -hmm. can you compare you know in the last 10 15 years how has childhood obesity changed well actually um, in 2012 are the last statistics that mm -hmm. we have and it hasn't changed that much since they checked before you know the uh, five years before that certainly in the last generation it's changed a lot but actually we've seen the last statistic showed a slight decrease in the levels of obesity in mm. very young children so that's good to see that's the first time we've seen that in a while for for many years it's just been a steady rise in both children and adults with levels of obesity and what are some of the biggest contributing factors um, I think a very large factor well some of the things that we know is uh, watching more television increases the risk of obesity and there's three reasons we think that might be the case first because they may be watching television or uh, inside rather than being active second there's a lot of advertisements and there's mm -hmm. some evidence that just watching that television uh, they're seeing advertisements for less healthy foods and then um, also that they may be eating those unhealthy foods while they're watching television acute heart failure patients are more likely to die within two years of hospitalization if they have trouble understanding and using health information, according to a new study. Heart failure is a complicated condition, said lead author Dr. Candace D. McNaughton of Vanderbilt University of Nashville, Tennessee. Patients often have to take multiple medications, monitor and count their salt intake, and monitor their symptoms and weight daily. In some cases, they even have to change the dosing of the medications in response to these. To do this, patients need to understand and use complicated medication information and numbers, she said. In the study, nurses ask patients three questions, whether they have problems learning about their medical condition, their confidence filling out medical forms, and how often they have someone help them read hospital materials, she said. Almost 24% scored low enough on the screen to qualify for low health literacy, and almost 30% died during follow-up. After accounting for the patient's age, gender, race, insurance, and medication, and education, other medical conditions and hospital length of stay, the, re the researchers found that those with low literacy were over 30% more likely to die than those who scored higher based on their self reports. Due to the lack of strong warning labels on potent antibiotics, most serious side effects are unknown. However, the FDA has recommended that extensive research be done on strong medications so that you know all of the side effects associated with the use of that potent drug. The FDA is currently fixing their mistake in the lack of warnings on potent labels by doing more research on strong medications and are improving their warning labels. The FDA is also altering the public about these serious side effects that can be permanent, and with this, they are also educating doctors on the dangers of prescribing potent drugs to their patients. The main concern, however, is that doctors need to be paying closer attention to the medications they're prescribing, because they often prescribe strong medications for minor illnesses. Recently, regular updates on the safety of these medications has been helping consumers greatly. Binge eating disorder is the most common eating disorder in the United States, con controlling 70 million people's lives in the world. Approximately 90% of people with mental illnesses commit suicide, 30% of which have eating disorders. Binge eating disorder is when an individual has recurrent episodes of compulsive overeating during which they lack control. 5% of women and approximately 3% of men in the United States have this disorder and feel helpless. Binge eating disorder results in medical complications such as type 2 diabetes, gallbladder disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and certain types of cancer. Symptoms include eating extremely fast, eating beyond feeling full, eating large amounts of food when not hungry, eating alone to hide how much you're eating, and other reasons like being obese or overweight. Causes are low levels of the brain chemical serotonin, depression, the hypothalamus gland, part of the brain that controls appetite, may be sending the wrong messages to the brain, 
and body dissatisfaction like sexual abuse or mental abuse. The new medication of Ivance will help injured around the world. They now have a medication that deals with their problem, and although there, although there are health risks like any medication, antidepressants have a lot of risks also, and not having to take both medications will be a, a sign of health and hope. More people may die from undiagnosed lung cancer because they don't qualify for low-dose CT scans, according to a study by Mayo Clinic researchers. The researchers blame current screening guidelines that may have remained the same despite the decline in smoking rates in the U.S. Current U.S. Preventive Service Task Force guidelines recommend annual low-dose CT screening for adults aged 55 to 80 who have smoked 30 pack years and who currently smoke or have stopped smoking within the last 15 years. This criteria is used by doctors and insurance companies to recommend and pay for scans. According to the researchers, the percentage of lung cancer patients who smoked at least 30 pack years declined over the study period, while the proportion of cancer patients who had quit for more than 15 years rose. As smokers quit earlier and stay off cigarettes longer, fewer are eligible for CT screening, which has been proven effective in saving lives, said Dr. Ping Yang in a statement released by the Mayo Clinic Cancer Center. Patients who do eventually develop lung cancer are diagnosed at a later stage when treatment can no longer result in a cure. Over the study period, the percentage of lung cancer patients who would have been eligible for CT screening under current guidelines fell dramatically, from 56.8% in 1984 to 1990 to 43.3% in 2005 to 2011. The proportion of men who would have been eligible decreased from 60% to 49.7% while the percentage of women dropped from 52.3% to 36.6%. Research, researchers worry about the trend. We don't want to disincentive patients to stop smoking. After our year-long investigation, Mide and I can conclude that although these health issues have been unrecognized and uncared for for a vast number of years, the awareness level of these issues is slowly starting to emerge. Both my colleague and I would like to thank you for taking this time out of your day to watch us explain to you the different health issues in our society today. We hope that you learned a lot from this episode and that you will take this information into consideration in